Welcome. Thank you for being here. We're so happy to have the opportunity to speak with you today. We hope we are on, on time. time. Not Easter time or Pacific time. Maybe Miami time, but on time. time. I'm a composer and a sound designer. I'm a film director and a multimedia artist. As on time, we create multimedia pieces and experiences, namely moving paintings. We create them for airlines, hospitals, waiting rooms. They don't know it yet, but we hope they'll buy one. <laughs> what you just saw was Wisps of Consciousness, a moving painting comprised of 38 individual paintings, which, simply put, Sophia creates and overimposes. And Kat designs the sound for. In one word, can anyone describe something you saw? Smoke. 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 Someone else? Faces. 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 Wonderful. Can you calculate like how long it was? Just in a moment. Not thinking. Three minutes. Eight minutes? Great. Three. <laughs> Three. <laughs> Good. Wonderful. All right. As you see, each of you had a different experience. Unique. The perception of each one of us is as valid as the perception of the next. You know, Kat, when I'm nervous, my legs shake inside of my trousers, but it's not visible on my face. Well, it's not visible on my face either. I didn't mean you at all. You see, I just took what Sophia said as a criticism to how I handle my nervousness in public. Well, I was just trying to express how I feel when I'm nervous. I took it personally. She took it personally. You know, this story of taking things personally used to drive me crazy. I always wondered, how can it not be personal? I'm also the kind of person that thinks that not because I'm paranoid doesn't mean they're after, not after me. Okay? So, how can it not be personal? Have you ever felt this way? With the moving paintings, which are a window into human perception, we want to show you and make you aware of what's personal and what isn't. In 2001, I made the first moving painting. I called it Birth, and it was style. And I've made like one a year since then. In 2010, Kat came on board. And I think that brought moving painting to a different level. And I think it was because of our collaboration. It also helped us get out of our artistic isolation. And it kept me from giving up on moving paintings altogether. Yes, you had begun them ahead of the time, but right now I think we are on time. time. Can you imagine what it is like to work with your mother, the film director? Well, can you imagine what it is to stop being yourself and begin to be Kat's mother? <laughs> Needless to say, our collaboration needs a lot of patience. And a sense of humor. When we first started working together, I didn't consider the fact that we were related at all. I was attracted to our common sense of aesthetics and ideas. Well, I was amazed. My daughter had become a composer that I admired and a thinker in her own right. I was thrilled. We both have very strong personalities. We are both very opinionated, here assertive women. Yes, but we've Learn to recognize when we're coming from the ego and keep that in check. We also work very hard at letting go of control. And we complement each other very well. We edit each other's writings and we critique each other's works honestly. Most importantly, we are learning not to take each other personally. This can be even more difficult in a family setting when in comparison to other relationship dynamics. But we try our best. Sometimes she's the mother. That's true. <laughs> but we digress. A moving painting is a four dimensional thing. <coughs> the fourth dimension being time. They're an abstract synergy between fine arts, digital painting, cinematography, photography, sound, and music. They are designed to avoid all types of discrimination of gender, race, age, language, and culture. They are art where anyone's interpretation is valid. Art for everyone, anyone. 
To be able to create a subconscious work of art, you have to be able to let completely go of control during the creative process. I go into a trance, and when I come out, I look at what I've done and choose what I'm going to use. With the moving paintings, they contain a subconscious narrative, which transports the viewer or me to a timeless, spaceless realm. Once there, I allow a visceral reaction to lead me in the sound design process. So we create subconsciously. In that space where we all know everything, your subconscious and our subconscious meet. From our story, your subconscious extracts a story that is relevant only to you, to each one of you, your own story. This we consider effective communication. The feedback communication needs to be effective is your story. I have a perfectly individual life. Yeah. Oh, my life is comprised of my family, my family life, my culture, my language, my neighborhood, right? My prejudices. So my perception of my life is completely individual. You inhabit yours. So by definition, yours and mine, hers or his, can never be the same. And it isn't. So, the moving painting brings you to the right hemisphere of your brain. And you find yourself in the creative, in the intuitive space where you can see that we're all artists. Some say it's like looking at clouds. For some it's meditation. For others, it's like listening to Lucy in the sky with diamonds. For us, it's oneness. So, in this subconscious, where we know everything, why do we get there? Because just as we didn't exercise any control, you cannot have any control about what you're watching. How can two people take something personally if they are apparently talking to each other but are actually talking to themselves. So no matter what we perceive, the result is seen through the eye of the beholder. So the next time you feel like scratching someone's eyes out for something they said, you might want to pause and ask if what you're understanding thing is what they are saying. Most of the time, you'll receive a surprised reaction. No! What I meant is... What you see is only in your eyes. What you think is only in your mind. What you witness is wishful thinking. What you say, I don't get it. What I hear is not what I hear. What I see, I project onto you as on a screen. What I feel, I transfer onto my image of you. What I see is my own perception, my image in the mirror. You are somehow there, an accidental bystander. We both think we are seeing another. We both feel sure of what we see. We are both Abba, deluded by the Maya, the illusion the fantasy. We don't see things as they are. We see things as we are. Thank you. Thank you.